morning, everyone. I want to say that I have the sniffles, but I got tested, and it's not COVID. So the worst you're going to get is a cold, which, I mean, take what you get, right? OK, so that was not funny, and I apologize. I mean, I think I heard like two laughs. Thank you. I don't know who that was. I can't see any of you, which is nice. OK, so yeah, as Ellie said, uh, my name is Sara Vieira, which Ellie's one of the only people that can actually pronounce my name correctly, which I appreciate. Usually just something like Vieira, something like that, which I don't, I don't know. But yeah, so welcome to my talk. I know it's 10 AM, and we're going to be looking at Blender, which is a thing that a lot of you have not seen. And if you have seen a lot of years ago, I promise you that it looks better. It looked really bad. And that's why no one used it. So uh, I started doing Blender in the like mid-pandemic or something. I don't know, like when everyone started doing their hobbies, basically. And so this is one of the things that I make. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. So this is one of the things. Also, I brought a mouse because I'm that person now. Um, so uh, this is one of the things that I made. And what we're going to try to do today here together as a family all together in an actual conference is, wow, is that we're going to try to bring this little boy, which I will gender as a boy, apparently, to the web and try to put it on a website. OK, so who am I? My name is Sarah. Uh, Sara, whatever you want to call me, I don't care. Uh, I work as a front-end developer at a company called Remote, which is very confusing to tell to people when they're like, where do you work? And I was like, I work, I work at Remote. And they're like, I know you work remote, but where do you work? And it just keeps going back and forth until one of us gives up. And it's like, OK, fine, I don't care anymore. Uh, but yeah, so Remote is a company that helps companies hire remote workers with like the normal, you know, vacation time, and you're not a contractor, basically, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, so we're hiring. Tell them I sent you. Actually, don't. That sounds like a terrible. Do not tell them I sent you. And I love to do stuff in 3D. Uh, I started using Blender, like I said, in the middle of the pandemic, and I kind of fell in love with it. So all these things that you saw, I made them with my own hands. And um, I have a Windows computer. If anyone is going to ask, can I use Blender on a Mac? You can, but it's painful as hell. Like, it's just, it makes sounds that you didn't know a computer can make. And like, you think you know because of NPM, but trust me, you, you, you don't. So this uh, uh, talk, wow, it's been so long since I've done a, per a talk that I was like, this, what's the name of this? Talk is going to be divided into parts. The first part, we're going to go to Blender and just export the little fella. And then the second part, we're going to jump into the web. OK, so if you've never heard of Blender, Blender is a free and open source 3D software. The reason there is an asterisk on 3D is because it actually does other stuff. Like it does 2D. It also does video editing. But like the 2D aspect is not bad, but everything else is like, it's mostly known for its 3D aspect. And um, yeah, it's free and open source. Uh, you can also write plugins and procedural stuff in Python. If you know Python, I don't. So there you go. So let's go. I'm going to open up Blender. And this is how it looks now. So if you have used it before, it looked worse, like so much worse. Like, has any, who in here has ever opened Blender uh, before version 2.8? OK, so no one has seen how bad it was. So you don't understand like how good it looks now. You're like, this doesn't even look that good. No, you don't understand. <laughs> I beg you to Google online Blender 2.7 UI. OK, so this is my little mug. And there are mostly three views here in Blender. So this one is the one that I have right now is just for you to see the meshes, which are the little, like, a cube, a ball, whatever it is, and like everything you have in the scene. And then there are two render views. And there's something called EV, and there's something called Cycles. EV is the same thing, at, not the same thing, but the same idea as 3JS. So it's not physically val like good. It's just like it kind of imitates light and how light should bounce, but it figures it out by, like, I don't know, AI and Python. It's probably not AI, it's just a bunch of if statements. I mean, what is AI? <laughs> a bunch of if statements. But the, and so this thing is new, which makes it completely doable to use it on a Mac, because it doesn't actually do all of that stuff. So if I switch to EV here, and it takes a while. And I come to the camera. This is how it looks in Eevee. So you can see that if I move it, like the light kind of like does this like shadowy, weird thing. And that's because it's calculating it in real time. If you think about game engines like Unity or Unreal or something like that, it does the same thing but worse. There you go. 
Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen Unreal 5, but it's way worse than Unreal 5. Let's not even go there. Um, so yeah, Eevee. Eevee, this, this, Cycles is the one that makes your computer go pss. I don't know if that was too loud. So this is Cycles. And you're going to be OK. Um, so yeah, this is Cycles. And what Cycles does is like imagine every beam of light in this room. It literally calculates where it bounces and where it refracts and everything for each single one of those lights. And every light has like a 1,000 points of light. So it's, it needs a really good um, graphics card or any graphics card. And uh, yeah, so MacBook is a no-no. Um, so yeah, this is the more realistic one, but it's not the one we're going to use. So yeah, let's go back to Eevee so my computer doesn't die. And I wanted to mostly just explain this. And I wanted to show you something as well in here. So like, imagine that you want to change a color or something. So there is this little tab here, and I have it at orange, and let's make it like blue or something. So. Uh, this blend file, if you want to play with it, it's completely free, open source, CC0, whatever. And you can just download it, do whatever you want. Uh, please don't draw anything weird on him because he looks so happy. But apart from that, yeah, whatever. OK, so one very important thing is to know how, let's say you downloaded a model from the internet, like Sketchfab, the internet. And you want to export it somewhere. So the first thing is that. Any mesh can have several meshes in it. So like you see, this has a circle, which I have no idea what it is. And it has another circle. There you go. That makes sense, because I named my stuff, right? <sighs> I should have named it. But there is a button. If you click on the right, right side, sorry, I switched. I get issues with right from left. And I have a license. So think about that for a little bit. Uh, and you select a hierarchy. This means that you will select everything in it. So if I click G to move it, you can see that it moves everything in it. OK, cool. So let's export it. So file, and you can click Export. And uh, for the web, you should use GLTF. GLTF is a format that's mostly used for the web. OK, cool. That's it. So I'm already in the thing. So Blender to the web. Let me go to public. So there are mostly there are three types. So there's a binary, and there's a GLTF file. People will tell you to use the binary because it's slightly smaller. I would as well. But the other one is just pure JSON, and this is a talk, so I'm going to use the other one because I love JSON. So GLTF embed is a JSON file. Like, it's a very scary, terrible JSON file, but it's a JSON file. And something very important that you should always click is apply modifiers. And there was something else. Do, 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 do. Include selected objects, because otherwise it's going to literally put your entire scene, which is not what we want. So I'm going to call it the boy, and I'm going to turn on compression. OK, export GLTF. Let's see what happens, right? Like, OK, so I have this, and let's open this file. And as you can see, it's a very scary JSON file. So like this part is because it's an image, like a texture. And it's just, you know, no one is ever going to read this. But let's pretend that it, it all makes sense, right? OK, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to minify this even more. So I have, I have sheet sheets. And I want to use GLTF transform, and this adds a Draco compression to it. So I am going to go to public, and boy, and then call it, uh, so send it to public. No, no, there you go. The boy that, OK, Draco, whatever, the GLTF. And this is going to compress it more. OK, I say open dot. It should have been in public. Oh, it did the thing. OK, so right. Uh, where is it? It's 1.2 megabytes. And this one right now, where is that? It's 406 kilobytes. So it just like compresses everything really big, uh, really a lot. So the first step of this is that we need to transform this GLTF into uh, JSX. And we can do that using an online tool. Or you can do that using the command line. But since I have internet, I'm going to use the online tool. So I'm going to drop it here. Uh, why did I open my entire thing again? Uh, this was not a good idea. OK, so open. <laughs> it's like, no, it's all my <sighs> pirated movies. <laughs> you can't pirate stuff in Germany, by the way. They will come at you. Like, literally, they will go to your house. Um, uh, it has not happened to me yet. Uh, so here is the little fella, right? And here we have a very small set of code that you can't read, but I promise you'll be able to read it in the 
J ugh, you know what I mean, VS Code. There we go. So let me copy this. And the first thing I'm going to do is paste it over here. So this is the site, and we have this little coffee mug, which we don't care about. We're going to kill it with fire. And we're going to put the little funky person here. Oh, now he's a person. Wow, OK. <laughs> He got, he got upgraded to person. That's great. So there are three things that you need to install, which I, I pre-installed, uh, which is, so you need to add React, come here, uh, re, uh, three, React 3 Fiber and React 3 Dre. So Fiber is the, uh, how, it's the, oh God, I forgot the name for the React thing that does like React Native thing, which is the, um, it make, yeah. Okay, React 3, you need that. And then you have React 3 Dry, which is a set of helpers that help you with a lot of stuff, because they're helpers. They're, they're good like that. Okay, so I have a model, and it's a component, and I can't export a default, so I'm just gonna, I don't know why I keep doing like live coding in talks, because I hate myself. Make, eh. oh, okay, okay, okay. So now, we should get an error one day, is it compiling? Uh, uh, corresponding disk note. What? <laughs> Don't do life coding, kids. I have no, I've never seen that error, and I've seen a lot of errors when it comes to 3JS. Like a lot of them. I don't know what this means. Cannot find, does not, Label on this because not recommend. <laughs> okay, so this is probably an issue with the fact that three probably got updated since I last used it, and now uh, it is just open in GitHub. So let's let's figure this out together. <sighs> uh, 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 open file and remote. And let's come here, and let's go to the main. See, I was smart enough to at least push this. So that's, that's a good thing. Okay, let's copy this, paste it in here. That was not a paste. Sorry, this is a German keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. A lot of stuff happened there that I don't know what it meant. But uh, yeah, welcome to German keyboards. Okay, so let me run yarn again. And uh, all we can do is really just hope for the best. Okay, we did not, and it's all right. The mouse has buttons that do things. <sighs> Will it work? For the love of God. Do it's doing this to me, and I apologize for wasting everyone's time. Uh, but trust me, this is way worse for me than it is for you. <laughs> Mainly when it's something that you don't know how to fix, that it's like cannot read proper, oh no, that's fine. Like you just, you just put one of those like, so uh, yeah, how is everyone doing? Do you ever just like, you do something that you haven't done in a long time, and like I wonder why I haven't done that in a long time, and then you do it, right? And then life is pain, and you're like, oh, I remember now. Like when you haven't, oh, thank God. <laughs> In case of a doubt, it's, it's yarn. I mean, NPM, it's the same. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you still don't get, God, I need a moment there. Whew. Okay, so you still don't get anything, and that's because to render anything in React 3 Fiber, we need a canvas, right? So let's import the canvas from React 3 Fiber, and this is like, this is telling React and everything that like everything inside of here is not DOM. It's like WebGL, basically. Right, and let me close this canvas. And now, like, it should show us a really sad version of it, uh, which, like, it's just, it's like, so. This is supposed to happen, by the way. I'm just very awkward. Uh, so what is happening right now is that everything that, that happens in 3D needs light. So if there is no light, like real life, right? If there's no light, you're gonna hit your foot on something, and you're gonna step on a Lego, and you're gonna cry. Not that this has happened to me. Um, yeah, and what don't we have? Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, I, I need interaction right now. So I'm gonna open up my little things and I'm gonna add two lights here. 
So one of them is an ambient light, and an ambient light has no shadow. And to think of an ambient, actually an ambient light doesn't make any sense in real life. But it's like there's just a point of light that spreads evenly everywhere and makes no shadow. And a spotlight is like these things that are ruining my eyes right now. So that casts a shadow. So right now, we, you can see that we have a little bit, uh, like not a little bit, but we have some lights and we have a little bit of shadow, right? Okay, that looks cool, but does it look cool enough? No. So what we want to use here is something called a stage. And a stage is something that React 3 Dre has to just display your 3D model, right? So I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna close it here, and I'm actually gonna import this from a component that I made, which is about the same thing, but I added some props to it, and I already made a PR. A component, stage, there we go. So what a stage does, is that it, it, it just makes everything look better instantly because it creates a little like, you know, like a stage. Like, you know, like the lights in your face. Uh, like, like literally this, right? Cool, 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 cool. So there's a bunch of environments as well, which you can check. If I delete this, I think it's gonna show me the type definitions. It is not, but there's something called like Dawn, for example. And this basically downloads images from the web to just put an environment on it. I tried them all. The one that looked like better was night. So this is looking good, right? Like we have the little, little nugget boy there. But what if we animate him? I know. I know. <laughs> I know. OK, so we can do this together as a family. OK, good. So as you can see, this ref here, is marked to a use ref, so it means that we have access to the entire group. Think of a group like a div or a G in SVG, so it's, it's just a, it just groups the thing, right? And then when you move it, it moves everything inside of it. That's why when you're in Blender, you make things parent of things, and then everything is a, just everything is everything. There you go. Good talk, right? Okay, so one thing that we need, that we need to do is to import something called use frame, and I'll explain what it does. And I could console.log it, but I'm not gonna because it's gonna kill my computer. So what use frame does, it did not import it, did it? It did, okay, cool. Uh, what use frame is, is that when you're, this doesn't work like the normal DOM. So every, thank God, every, um, every time you look at it for every second, there are 60 frames. I mean, depending on your computer, obviously. But there are supposed to be 60 frames, so this runs on every single frame. There's just nothing happening right now because Nothing is happening right now, right? So let's come here, and let's just get the position and rotation of the element. And if I, the, okay, let me just explain the position. So the position X is this, Y is this, and Z is the one up at your face. So if I wanna just move it up slightly, I can just add 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, and it's gonna slightly float up to nothingness, and it's gonna disappear eventually. So. Every frame, it's moving at 0.1 up. And there is also like mathematical functions like math.sin and stuff like that that do stuff like this. But I made a couple of functions because, uh -huh, there we go. Okay, I copied this thing twice. Okay, let me just use this now. I don't need the mouse anymore. It did its job. And I'm gonna import this wobble function and I will show you what it is. Uh, uh, let me import it. Import wobble from back. No, it's not back. It's here. It's here with all of us. Utils, animations. There we go. God, I've been broken by the music scene in Berlin. This is, this is the music I sing now. So now it wobbles. Look at that. Thank you. Whoever made that sound. So what is math at sin? Math at sin is that thing, I don't, I failed this part of math and I thought I would never need it in my life. And then I was like, you know what, I should do 3D. And he was like, so now you need like tangents and sins and I was like, fuck. Okay, so if I can explain this to you, everything's gonna be fine. Um, so a math at sin is something that does something like this. It goes from a number from minus one to one. And what you need to pass to it is something that keeps on moving. 
And in this case, we're using state.elapsed time, state.clock.elapsed time, which says how much time has passed since you've actually started rendering the scene. And so it just does this. And then you can multiply it by something or divide it by something. This thousand is just a random number. This has no point in here. I could remove it and do something else. And then I'm multiplying by math.py. I could multiply it by 10, and then it will just be faster. But then it will like go down too much. So yeah, the rest is just experimentation. All right, okay, cool. So that's cool, it wobbles, that's cute, isn't it cute? It's the cutest thing and it works. So then I'm dividing it by a lot, but you don't have to do that. So then I wanted to do the exact same thing on the rotation, and now it does this, because it's a cute thank you. I think that was a different person. <laughs> thank you. I think the one came from here and the other one came from over there. I don't know, I can't see any of you, so you're fine. You can do whatever you want. And I wanna do something else, which is like, what if it looked at you, right? because that's not creepy at all. Imagine like you're just drinking your coffee and your mug's like, what are you doing? <sighs> okay, so let me reload, because sometimes like when you, like um, HMR, uh, sorry, English is not my main language. I'm just gonna use that for the rest of my life. Uh, the position gets screwed up. So now, it uses the mouse to tell what it is, and it looks at you, right, on the X and the Y. And what this uses is that it takes the state of the, well, the state of the mouse, <laughs> the position of the mouse on the X and the rotation, right, and lerp, uh, so let's go to the math of high school again where I failed. Uh, it just, it uses two numbers and tries to go between them in a very slow and steady motion. Um, and this comes from 3JS, which is quite cool. So yeah, that's basically what we wanted to do. So now we have this, let me just make it bigger so that we can see it, and uh, uh, I need to find this to close it. And there we go. So now if you open this page, there's a little one here, and as you can see, the, all the shadows and everything, they change with the position, which means that it's rendering in real time, which is quite cool. And this was about, what, uh, 56 lines of code. So it's doable. It's just something that we're not used to, right? And everything that we're not used to is hard. I know, I, Docker, I still don't understand Docker. Yeah, let's, let's not talk about it. I still don't know exactly what Kubernetes does either. I know, yeah. So yeah, that's what I have. I am two minutes out of time. Uh, so yeah, so you can download the blend file, the project, whatever you want from that URL, which is not complete. So it's github.com slash my name. <laughs> which has two eyes, don't forget the second eye there, that's a common mistake. Uh, Blender to the web, uh, I, will, I will not judge you if you did, it's like a very common thing. Like, why does it even have two eyes? It's really dumb. Uh, I am NikitaFTW on Twitter with two Ks because I like to confuse everyone, and I recently made an Instagram, and I called it the Evil Nugget, and uh, you can follow me there for all the stuff that I do in 3D if you think they're cute. Uh, or cool, or whatever, and yeah, I survived, and um, the pandemic and this talk. So I feel like just that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Amazing. Can we step into my office, please? Okay, cool. Which one, which side? Oh, whichever one you like. Okay. Oh, I get to Have choose. a sit, stay a while. Um, you can ask questions on Slido at slido.do. The code is 2225. Um, but I think we might have a couple in the pipeline already. Yeah, okay. So for those of us with Max, are there render farms or equivalent we can offload to? There are a lot of, wait, sorry, I'm just gonna go back to my computer because there's a free one actually. <laughs> Free one. There is a free render farm from Blender, so Blender free render farm. I hope I don't get spam. This is actually free, so a lot of people, basically what they do is they download an app, which I do have it on my Windows, which is a very beefy gaming computer that has you know all the lights and stuff. It lights up the entire fucking house. But yeah, so you can use this, it's free. Uh, if you don't wanna use this one, you can Google Blender render farm or 3D render farm, and there's so many of them, yeah. There's a lot of them. I don't know if you wanna do this, maybe not live. Uh, could you make it spin slowly? Spin what, like this? Yeah, you can just add the, I'm just gonna, could have not, <laughs> you could have said that while I was here. I, yeah. Let's see if I can do it, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm already embarrassed they myself, did say so it's please. fine. So. 
<sighs> I know, it's very British to say please. In Germany, they would be like, it's your job. Make it spin. You have to make it spin. Do it. Okay, so rotation that Y, which I think it's this one, and it's literally the same thing, so you can do this. No, that's, no. Ah, German. So how is Germany, huh? Uh, I'm just gonna copy it from here. That's how it is. Uh, 0 0.01. And it spins. While you're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have, and I know this is a hard question, Yeah. a favorite nugget? A favorite nugget? A favorite thing you've made? A favorite character? Oh, a favorite thing that I've ever made in Blender. Yeah. I don't know, let me, I don't, maybe. Do you love all of them equally? No, God fuck no. <laughs> I've made a lot of cursed stuff, girl. Some stuff that you're like, God, that's worse than code. Um, that's cute. Thank you. I think, uh, I think my favorite one is this one. Aww. Uh, which, there is no video, but there's also a video of him just waking up. And I think this was the favorite thing that I've ever made. Incredible. Thank, Thank you. you, Sarah, for your talk. Give it up for Sarah, everyone. Thank you.